Week 2, Tier 2. This tier, which I've dubbed the Obscure Tier, features aspects of Fallout New Vegas that are a bit deeper than the previous tier. More obscure. See what I did there? This tier has cut locations, fan favorite theories, fun bugs, and answers the question, is every New Vegas quest a song title? Let's get into it. Mr. New Vegas is an AI. Like last week, we'll be kicking off today's tier with a topic previously covered. It's a bit unfortunate, yes, but that's the way the sweet roll crumbles. Heard on Radio New Vegas is none other than the famed Wayne Newton. But rather than taking the moniker of Mr. Las Vegas, he instead is known as Mr. New Vegas. As the radio's DJ, Mr. New Vegas plays music, reads news reports, and makes comments on the courier's actions throughout the course of the game. But unlike Mr. New Vegas' peer on the East Coast, Three Dog, it turns out that the radio DJ is not actually a human. Instead, Mr. New Vegas is an AI personality that was created by Mr. House prior to the Great War. A USA Today article written on August 9, 2010, two months prior to the release of New Vegas, notes that the upcoming futuristic video game Fallout New Vegas takes place after a nuclear war with China decimates the USA. But Wayne Newton, Mr. Las Vegas, survives as the voice of a DJ programmed centuries earlier. Two days later, on August 11, 2010, a Bethesda blog post corroborated this fact. Mr. New Vegas is interesting because he's just a voice on the radio. He has no body. He was created by Mr. House, so he's literally just a voice. He tells what's going on in the world, he's always upbeat, and he has some very bizarre lines. Mr. House really thought of everything when it came to taking over Las Vegas, eh? Ellen DeGeneres, Matthew Perry, and Benny Continuing the trend of talking about New Vegas voice actors, did you know that Matthew Perry got his iconic role as Benny due to his 2009 appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show? On April 24th, 2009, Matthew Perry appeared on The Ellen Show to promote his upcoming movie, Seventeen Again. You know, the one where Perry is having a midlife crisis and transforms into Zac Efron. Anyway, it was on this episode of Ellen that Matthew Perry spoke about his love for Fallout 3. After giving Ellen an Xbox 360 and a copy of the game, he said, I played this video game so often that I injured my hand so severely that I had to go to a hand doctor and get injections in my hand because I love this video game so much. The game is called Fallout 3. I'm not affiliated with this game at all, I just love it. But I signed it, so it looks like I created it. After hearing Perry praise the game, publisher Bethesda reached out to him, asking if he would be interested in playing a character for their upcoming game. And the rest is history. The late Matthew Perry would go on to voice Fallout New Vegas' secondary antagonist, Benny. Chinese Stealth Suits First found in the Fallout 3 Operation Anchorage DLC, the Chinese stealth armor was a high-tech suit worn by China's Crimson Dragoons. The armor allowed for the Dragoon operatives to counter America's might and brawn with stealth and deception. Since the stealth armor has made an appearance in every Fallout title to date, either being found in the base game or as part of Fallout 4's creation club, New Vegas is no different. Two pairs of Chinese stealth suits can be found in the office level of the Hoover Dam. Located in a radioactive storage room, these suits are yours for the taking. Though be warned, these suits might be dollar store knockoffs, as they don't grant a stealth field upon crouching. The inclusion of these suits in New Vegas, and notably in the Hoover Dam, serves as a reference to Black Isle Studios' cancelled Fallout 3, Van Buren. You see, part of the background lore for Van Buren included a pre-war event known as the Hoover Sabotage. The Hoover Dam sublevels served as a top secret research facility where American scientists were crafting genetically modified creatures to use against China. Chinese intelligence caught wind of these rumors and sent a stealth team to destroy the dam. The result of the sabotage ended up being quite chaotic, as the bombs that the Chinese planted went off prematurely, alerting American forces, destroying the dam's generators, and releasing some of the mutant creatures. The Chinese agents that managed to escape took with them some samples of the Limit 115 virus, aka the New Plague. These samples would be released into a crowded public area in Denver. 
Now, while there is no in-game evidence that the Hoover sabotage took place in the canon Fallout timeline, the stealth suits found in New Vegas' Hoover Dam serve as a neat little reference to some lost lore. The moon comes over the tower. Let's delve into a bit of cut content. The moon comes over the tower is a New Vegas side quest that sees the courier bug a terminal in the Lucky 38 on behalf of the followers of the apocalypse. The followers are interested in finding out what sort of technology Mr. House is making use of to stay alive for so long, believing that it would be a great benefit for ailing wastelanders. It's a very quick quest, netting the player a good chunk of XP and followers fame. No real downside or risk in completing it, it's a freebie quest. But it wasn't always this way. Part of the moon comes over the tower was cut from the final version of New Vegas. We know this because the Lucky 38 Executive Override, the terminal option used to plant the bug in the casino, appears on several terminals across the Mojave. Emily Ortal would have asked the courier to bug many house-related terminals, assumedly scrubbing these computers for various pre-war information on the elusive man. These terminals would be found in Anthony House's office in the h, &H Tools factory, the house resort at Camp Gulf, New Vegas Steel, and an office in the Central Sewers. Once these terminals underwent Lucky 38 Executive Override.exe, it would be then that Emily would ask the courier to bug the Lucky 38. This cut content turns a two minute freebie quest into a much, much longer one. Underpass Underpass was a settlement that was cut from Fallout New Vegas. The town would have been located in the top right of the map, located just below Nellis. As far as information about the town goes, there's quite a bit. For starters, the New Vegas game guide notes that for the Beyond the Beef side quest, one must go to Underpass to find Carlisle St. Clair. In the current version of New Vegas, one will instead find Carlisle at his house west of Fields Shack. Underpass was also set to have a quest involving the repair of a water purifier for the town. Other than that, six generic Underpass citizens can be found in the game files, and notably a character called Meg Reynolds, with an editor ID of Underpass Mayor. She has a single line of voice dialogue saying, well howdy. And that's that. Underpass would never make it into the final version of New Vegas. Prim Reputation New Vegas has eight faction reputations, the Brotherhood of Steel, Kaiser's Legion, Great Cons, NCR, Followers of the Apocalypse, Boomers, and Powder Gangers. It has four town reputations, Freeside, Good Springs, The Strip, and Novak. But it also has a fifth town reputation that was cut from the game, Prim. Unfortunately, however, because it was cut from the game, we don't have the exact actions needed to alter one's reputation for Prim. Though, I'd imagine that it would have something to do with I Fought the Law, My Kind of Town, and a team of moronic mercenaries. You know, the Prim Quests. Nobark Noonan is the Chosen One Here's a theory that seems to be a bit of a fan favorite. This theory posits that Nobark Noonan, an eccentric and paranoid resident of Novak, is actually the protagonist of Fallout 2, the Chosen One. In Fallout 2, the Chosen One is tasked with retrieving the Garden of Eden creation kit to save their home village of Arroyo. The Chosen One's journey involves various adventures, playing a crucial role in how the western wasteland is shaped. This theory speculates that, following the events of Fallout 2, the Chosen One traveled east to the Mojave. They crashed their highwayman at the wrecked highwayman location, and with nowhere else to go, settled in the desert frontier. Fallout 2 confirms that the Chosen One was born in 2221, making them 60 by the start of New Vegas. As Nobark is quite a bit of an old chap, the dates would align. And Nobark is surprisingly wealthy, able to bet up to 1,000 caps when playing games of Caravan. These clues would seem to point to Nobark being a former legend of the Wastes. Mr. House Pre-Release Face Despite being a literal man-raisin, House hides his true appearance in lieu of a professional portrait. But did you know that this picture of the middle-aged businessman and CEO wasn't the first picture that was planned to be used for House? A prior image of House was actually much more unsettling, 
and definitely less flattering. Prior to New Vegas' release, a New Vegas Developer Diary video was released going over the upcoming factions of New Vegas. Within the video, it shows a short scene of the courier in the Lucky 38 penthouse approaching Mr. House. The image shown is not the one found in the release version of the game, but rather this much creepier version. As for why House's image was changed, I'd wager that the developers wanted House to appear more trustworthy. The pre-release image doesn't exactly shout, trust me, I'm not a sleazy businessman. And so changing the image from a greasy, crooked smile businessman to a no-nonsense professional makes sense. I don't know if I'd trust House with my hard-earned caps, but I definitely wouldn't trust pre-release House. He looks like he reeks of pungent cologne. Orion Marino Bug Orion Marino is a retired Enclave soldier found in the Mojave. After the destruction of the Enclave oil rig and the routing of Camp Navarro, remnants of the Enclave were culled, fled to the Capital Wasteland, or attempted to eke out a living in secrecy within the Wasteland. Orion chose the final option. In an attempt to avoid NCR law, Orion fled to the Mojave frontier, taking up residence south of New Vegas. However, Orion could not escape the NCR, as the faction moved east for their new Mojave campaign. The Republic would set up a farm near his house, informing the old man that he was squatting on land claimed by the NCR. It is thanks to Orion's past and this housing hiccup that Orion holds much resentment towards the new California Republic. And so when the Courier and Arcade Ganon want to get the band back together, Marino only agrees as long as the remnants don't come to the aid of the NCR. Now if the Courier goes against Marino's wish, and if the Courier fails a speech check, then this results in a violent confrontation between the two, leaving Marino dead. Now during the development of New Vegas, the dev team came across a pretty funny bug. During the second battle of the Hoover Dam, when the remnants come down in their vertebrate, the corpse of Marino would come down too, simply laying lifeless among the other Enclave remnant soldiers. During a live stream, Josh Sawyer described the bug as one of the funniest things he encountered during development, stating that because Marino and squadmate Krieger hate each other, he imagined that Krieger was the one tossing Marino's corpse out of the vertebrate, bringing the stubborn soldier to the battle out of spite. And while this bug never made it into the final version of New Vegas, maybe it should have. Alive or not, all the Enclave remnants are going to the second battle of the Hoover Dam. NCR Raider War Did you know that the NCR and three raider gangs of the Western Wasteland come from the same pre-war vault? Vault 15 was a vault designed to house people from radically diverse ideologies. As one might expect, this turned out quite poorly. As the years went on, the vault became quite overpopulated, living conditions deteriorated, and sub-factions began to form within the population. Following a particular conflict among the dwellers, the vault finally opened. A mass exodus occurred, with the leaving dwellers eventually going on to form four distinct wasteland factions, the Vipers, the Jackals, the Khans, and the NCR. Three raider factions, and the NCR. Since Vault 15's opening in 2141, the NCR has been at odds with all three factions, resulting in an ongoing war between the NCR and raiders that has lasted generations. And while all three raider gangs have been neutered, the fact that all three exist in New Vegas means that the NCR raider war has been an ongoing conflict for 140 years, with little to no end in sight. Van Buren I know it might seem weird to say, but it's not a New Vegas iceberg without the inclusion of Van Buren, right? We already mentioned these stealth suits referencing Van Buren's Hooper sabotage, but let's go deeper. Van Buren was the codename for what was supposed to be the third installment in the Fallout series. The project was in development by Black Isle Studios before the studio's closure in 2003. Set to explore the wastelands of the American Southwest, Van Buren shared its relative geographical scope with the eventual Fallout New Vegas. And while Van Buren itself never made it to completion, its spirit and some of its conceptual elements found a new home in the Mojave Desert. 
For instance, the NCR, a prominent faction in Fallout 2, was set to be included in Van Buren. The NCR would go on to play a pivotal role in the political landscape of the Mojave. Similarly, Kaiser's Legion was initially created by Chris Avalon during the pre-production for Van Buren. Sawyer would eventually take the group and morph it into the Roman Slavers Legion that we now know. Other things planned for Van Buren that would eventually make it their way into New Vegas is the NCR Brotherhood War, Joshua Graham, Alice McLafferty, the Van Graffs, the Hoover Dam, the Circle of Steel, the idea of the Brotherhood seeking shelter in an underground bunker, Arcade Gannon, Ulysses mentions a lot of Van Buren locations, Fort Abandon, the Twin Mothers, Hangdog Village, and most notably, the Boulder Dome from Van Buren was morphed into the Big Empty from Old World Blues. So whenever people ask what parts of Van Buren can or should be considered canon, it's a bit of a silly question, because much of Van Buren has already been recycled into New Vegas. We have similar characters, locations, and plots. New Vegas's canon has got Van Buren covered. Betsy the Brahmin Let's go on a bit of a cut character spree. Found within the files of New Vegas is a water Brahmin known as Betsy the Brahmin. Betsy would be found in an animal pen just outside of Freeside's North Gate. While nothing can be outright confirmed about the water Brahmin, there are some indicators that she was meant to serve as some sort of companion to the courier. Two impartial dialogue options can be found within the game files. Betsy, I need to go on by myself, are you going to be okay girl? And, come on girl, let's get going. And while these dialogue lines are in no means confirming that the courier was supposed to go adventuring with the water brahmin, I do think that there could have been a quest involving the herding of Betsy and returning her back to her owner, perhaps. Not a permanent companion, but rather a temporary one, similar to the brahmin found in Fallout 2. Marilyn the Securitron Marilyn is a Securitron that was cut from the final version of New Vegas. Similar to Jane, Marilyn would have been another one of House's private Securitrons. She was removed from the game after discovering a few errors in her voiceover that were unable to be fixed in time. Because of this last minute removal, Marilyn is still referenced by Veronica in-game when she notes that she's surprised House only had two robot sex slaves. As mentioned in the previous tier, she also makes an appearance on the Two of Diamonds alongside Jane in the Vault 21 playing cards. Chauncey the Ranger Our final notable cut character is a super mutant known as Ranger Chauncey. Part of the NCR Rangers, Chauncey was to be stationed at Ranger Station Foxtrot, likely serving as a correspondent between the Rangers and the super mutants at Jacobstown. He would appear as a normal West Coast super mutant, but be wearing a normal sized ranger hat, making it look quite small on his big ol' head. What's funny about Chauncey's removal is that when asked why he was cut from the game, Josh Sawyer responded saying that he had no idea that Chauncey was cut from the game, and also wondered why he was. Here's an interesting fact for you though. Did you know that Chauncey wasn't the first super mutant to be a part of the new California Rangers? In fact, in Fallout 2, one can find a super mutant named Gond, working at the NCR Rangers HQ. Fun little fact for you. New Vegas Bad Ends While the New Vegas independent ending serves as a failsafe so that the player will always have a way to beat the game, did you know that New Vegas features two game over events that will end the game prematurely, forcing you to reload a previous save file? Both take place in the game's first DLC, Dead Money. Near the climax of Dead Money, the player can unknowingly trap themselves in the Sierra Madre Vault if they're a bit too nosy while on Frederick Sinclair's Vault Control Terminal. While on the terminal, there's an entry titled Sinclair's Personal Accounts. When you try to open it, the terminal gives a warning, and if you forgo the warning and access the accounts anyway, you'll be met with a message directed to Dean Domino explaining that you are now trapped within the casino's vault. After closing the terminal, the game then ends. A second game over ending comes from siding with Elijah during the final confrontation with the estranged Elder. Instead of confronting the Elder and defeating him, the courier instead agrees with his plans of restarting the Mojave. After finishing the conversation, the game then ends, cutting to an ending slide about Elijah and the courier's efforts. 
using the cloud, collars, and holograms to subjugate the Mojave Wasteland. As a little bonus, there exists a cut ending from Old World Blues that is somewhat similar to the previously mentioned Elijah ending. While we don't know the exact nature of this ending, we do know that for it to happen, one must side with the think tank at the end of the DLC. And while the courier is unable to do this in the current version of New Vegas, it's evident that at one point you could. If one were able to side with the think tank and the ending was implemented, then an ending slide would play, going over how the think tank's disastrous creations would decimate the Mojave. Again, this ending was cut from the final version of Old World Blues, so not a whole lot is known about it. Regardless, the game over endings for New Vegas are a unique way for players to end the game, even if unintentional. Like me for being trapped in the vault ending. I just like to snoop. Alexis High Charisma Decanus Alexis is a Legion officer that can be found in the Takati Cup Mine. He serves as the jailer for a pair of NCR prisoners kept in the mine. Now, normally, this is the extent of Alexis's involvement in New Vegas. He holds a key to the cage, and that's it. The courier can either kill him or pickpocket him for the key. But upon inspection of the character within the Gek, it's revealed that Alexis has an abnormally high charisma stat at 10. For reference, Alexis's partner, Dead Sea, has a charisma of 5. Other notable Legion members like Lucius has a charisma of 4, Silas has a charisma of 6, Lanius has 7, Kaisar has 4. It's an outlier that Alexis, a character with not a single piece of unique dialogue, has a charisma score of 10. This is either a sick joke or something deeper, like cut content. While there has been no confirmation that Alexis was supposed to have a bigger role in New Vegas, the man does have a few blank dialogue entries where the player can ask him about freeing the prisoners. In addition, he appears on the Two of Clubs alongside Dead Sea with what is a suspected quote from him. It's because of this that I believe that at some point during development, he must have had a bigger role than he currently does. Again, while there is no solid evidence in the files of the game that would indicate Alexis having a larger role, his high charisma, blank dialogues, and appearance on the collector playing cards leads me to believe that Alexis was destined for more than just being a lame jailer. Cannibal Johnson, Coyote Bug Oh, what do you know, another bug about the Enclave Remnants. How fun. On your quest to put the band back together, one will venture to a cave south of Vault 34 that houses the Remnants marksman, Cannibal Johnson. His cave is a cozy little burrow that he calls home. He's got everything he needs. A mattress, some generators, a radio, a fire pit, and a handful of posters. Beyond his living quarters is an animal staging area where it seems that Johnson skins and cleans the animals he traps. The area has the corpses of mole rats, night stalkers, and coyotes. Now, on occasion, a strange bug happens. Sometimes when going to the animal staging area, the two corpses of the coyotes will have a chance to spawn alive at 0 HP. It's a weird bug reminiscent of the burned bodies bug that I've mentioned before. But this one is definitely less creepy. I mean, think about it. What if Johnson just domesticated the two coyotes and they're now his pets? Isn't that much more wholesome than burned bodies coming back to life? Test Map 01 Test cells typically serve as inaccessible locations where developers can test and experiment game physics, dialogues, textures, and so forth. They're located outside of the main world, so unless you have access to console commands, you'll be unable to get to them. Test Map 01, or Backups, is one such test cell. Test Map 01 is a massive test cell that includes some trapped ghouls, the Ranger Unification Memorial, Helios 1's Solar Farm, and more. What makes this test cell unique outside of its sheer size is that it's home to a handful of items from Fallout 3, like Nucalurk meat and a sweet roll. Now, it should come as no surprise that some items from Fallout 3 can be found in New Vegas, either in the game files or, in this case, in some test cells, as New Vegas was built upon using Fallout 3 as a base. The result is that some resources from Fallout 3 were left over in New Vegas. It's a neat little fact that I think is obscure enough for this tier. 
Brahmin tipping. Here's a weird one that's not even exclusive to New Vegas. So, in every canon Fallout installment except for four, the player can tip over Brahmin. To do it in New Vegas, make sure you're crouched and have your weapon holstered, then press the Activate button. The Brahmin will ragdoll before getting back up after a couple seconds. It serves as a reference to the urban myth of cow tipping, where young ne'er-do-wells would sneak up on unsuspecting or sleeping upright cows and push them over. In reality, cow tipping isn't really a thing because one, cows don't sleep upright, and two, cows are really hard to push over. Brahmin, on the other hand, would appear to be quite easy to shove over, thus Brahmin tipping. Ripley. We've had a lot of cut content in this tier, and we continue the trend here. During a 2013 developer session for Obsidian's Project Eternity, which would later become Pillars of Eternity, Chris Avalon showed an early concept for a map of New Vegas. The map features plenty of markers and features that made it into the game. One location that didn't make it, however, is the real-world hamlet of Ripley. Believe it or not, Ripley did not make the final cut for New Vegas. Doc Mitchell's Wife Let's do a bit of lore, shall we? Doc Mitchell is the Good Springs doctor who saves your life at the start of New Vegas. However, he didn't always live in Good Springs. Mitchell was born in Vault 21, located on what would become the New Vegas Strip. However, after House 1 Vault 21 in a game of blackjack, Mitchell and his peers were forced to leave their home. Mitchell would travel the wasteland as a wandering doctor. This life suited him for a while, but Mitchell got lonely. He would return to New Vegas to marry his childhood sweetheart. Together, the pair planned to travel to California and settle down there. However, because many dwellers were accustomed to the clean and sanitary conditions that Vault Living provided, once dwellers were exposed to surface conditions, many fell ill. Mitchell's wife was no different. The couple made it to Good Springs before Mitchell's wife would pass away. In Mitchell's words, after she passed, wasn't no reason to keep going. Mitchell would settle down in Good Springs to keep close to his wife's grave. It's that little bit of extra lore that New Vegas has that makes it one of the greats. Area 51 Area 51 is a real-life, highly classified United States Air Force facility located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada. The secretive nature of the base led it to becoming the focal point of many alien and UFO conspiracy theories. These theories have made the location, in my opinion, simultaneously one of the weirdest and coolest locations in the United States. And due to the setting of New Vegas taking place in Nevada, some have questioned why such an iconic location would be omitted from the game. Well, Josh Sawyer has the answer to that. When asked why Area 51 didn't make it into New Vegas, Sawyer said that the land between New Vegas and Area 51 was not close enough or interesting enough for the location's inclusion. He also made note that Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC already covered the connection between aliens and Fallout well enough, making Area 51's inclusion derivative. Still, for those who are fans of secret government bases and technology, the developers did make Old World Blues, which I have to say is, pound for pound, a much more interesting location when compared to Area 51. Quest Song Names To round out the obscure tier of the New Vegas iceberg, we have one final piece of New Vegas trivia. New Vegas quests tend to have some pretty obscure names. Names like Wang Dang Atomic Tango, Guess Who I Saw Today, and Oh My Papa are all pretty strange quests that don't provide a whole lot of context for what the quest is about. But those quest names are actually song titles. Wang Dang Taffy Apple Tango by Pat Boone, Guess Who I Saw Today by Nancy Wilson, and Oh My Papa by Eddie Fisher. In actuality, many New Vegas quest names share similar or the same names with song titles, but not all. If we include all unmarked DLC quests, then there are actually more quests that are not song titles than are. Still, Ace in the Hole, Abadaba Honeymoon, Ant Misbehaven, Anywhere I Wander, Arizona Killer, Back in the Saddle, Back in Your Own Backyard, Bare Necessities, Beyond the Beef, Bitter Springs Infirmary Blues, Booted, Bye Bye Love, Buy a Campfire Trail, 
Can you find it in your heart? Climb every mountain. Cold, cold heart. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Cry me a river. Eddie, my love. Eyesight to the blind for old Lang Syne. Guess who I saw today? Hard luck blues. Heartache by the number. How little we know. I could make you care. I don't hurt anymore. I fought the law. I hear you knocking. I put a spell on you. Keep your eyes on the prize. Left my heart. No, not much. Oh, my papa. Pistol packing. Someone to watch over me. Still in the dark. Tend to your business. That lucky old son. The finger of suspicion. The moon comes over the tower. There stands the grass. Unfriendly persuasion. You can depend on me. We will all go together. Wang dang atomic tango. You make me feel like a woman. Harder, better, faster, stronger. High times. Young hearts. Sunshine boogie. Bolaire. Nothing but a hound dog. One for my baby. My kind of town. Hats entertainment. Strike up the band. Ain't that a kick in the head. Ring a ding ding. GI blues. I forgot to remember to forget. Wheel of Fortune, you can depend on me, you'll know when it happens. Veni, Vidi, Beachy, birds of a feather, come fly with me, don't make a beggar of me, and why can't we be friends? I'll make reference to or share names with popular song titles. Whew, that's a lot. So yes, while many New Vegas quests do make reference to different songs, believe it or not, there are still a lot more quests, unmarked quests, and DLC quests that don't reference any song titles. And that wraps up Tier 2 of the New Vegas Iceberg. Even though we covered a ton of strange cut content, trivia, bugs, and lore, believe me, it only gets weirder from here. Stay tuned next week for Tier 3, what I call the Conspiracy Tier. That's all from me today, folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Join the Discord. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. What in the goddamn... Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello, the gasser everyone's been talking about? Making a splash on the strip? That's been you? Oh, shit.